have you ever reached a point of frustration where you've had enough? I'm not talking about with your family or personal relationships. I'm talking about the frustration that comes with consistently being left out. Left out of the kind of things that most Americans take for granted, like the public dialogue on issues that affect us all, or national studies and research that could have a positive impact on our lives. It took me a long time to get to this point, but I can no longer accept that it's OK for Native Americans to be left out of the public dialogue. I'd like to see that change. In fact, I feel like I'm being compelled by something that only a Native person could understand. So I'd like to share with you uh, a story. Uh, I'll take a moment here. And it's about how the wisdom of our cultural ways propels us and gives us what we need to meet the challenges that we have. I am a member of the Ho-Chunk Nation of Wisconsin. Uh, my father was David Lincoln Jr., who was a World War II veteran. His Ho-Chunk name was Wawahuska, which means he makes the enemy retreat. My mother was Ruby Little Sam Lincoln, and her Ho-Chunk name was Sogminanka, and that means rattling snake, poised to defend. Uh, those names really said a lot about their character and the kind of roles that they were destined to play. Both of them are gone now, but they gave me a great foundation in what it means to be a Ho-Chunk person. When the time came for me to get my Ho-Chunk name, my parents called on one of my grandfathers, and his name was Floyd White Eagle. And he was a highly respected person within our tribe. I was just a small child when um, I received my name, so I don't have any recollection of it. But I'm told that the sacred place where we held the ceremony was packed. And as it is with these naming ceremonies, all the relatives there say prayers that will carry this person throughout their lifetime. My grandfather Floyd named me Wakanchankmani. That means walks in the holiness of God. Um, when I was a um, young adult in college, my grandfather Floyd told me about that name. And uh, he told me that it was a family name that was passed down through the generations. And he told me about the kind of person who carries that name. And he said that. This person has a large heart and is filled with deep love and compassion for people. This person is a strong believer in the creator of all things and is humbled by his power. The woman who carries this name prays for people and does what she can to help those in need. She tries to do good on behalf of her people. So with a name like that and a purpose, it's no wonder that I got into journalism. But I certainly didn't start out with that in mind. Growing up, I became accustomed to seeing my people ignored by mainstream society. Textbooks didn't tell the whole story of what happened to Native people. When I wanted to write research papers on issues affecting Native Americans, there was scant information. And that's still true today. When the media reported on communities, um, Native American communities, which was rare and still is, uh, the stories were generally slanted against Native people. Where was the truth? Where was the journalistic integrity? Where was the heart to care enough to get the story right? I reached a point in my young adult life when I decided that I needed to do something about the lack of attention to Native American issues. I didn't think of it this way at the time, but my foray into journalism was prompted by the power of my Ho-Chunk name. 
So I spent the last 25 years or so of my professional life trying to do what I can to reflect the communities that I care about. There is a lot of great journalism that's being done, but just not enough about Native people and communities. Many of us who have pushed for greater diversity in newsroom staffing and in coverage have fought the good fight, and we've made some progress, but not enough. I see the digital age as a dawn uh, for diverse communities and for Native people to get their stories told. But as soon as I started blogging earlier this year about Native issues, I immediately became discouraged because we are still being left out. We are being left out of demographic studies because we are a small sample size and it would be too costly to include us. But what is the real cost to tribes for being left out of these national studies? Data collection on American Indians and Alaska Natives is vital because it has the potential to sway public policy. My friends, I've reached a point where I can't take excuses anymore. In this country, there are 5.2 million Native Americans, including those who've identified as being more than one race. We matter. We can no longer rely on mainstream society to do the right thing and recognize us. We, as Native people and Native journalists, collectively need to seize this moment in this digital age and publish our own stories, write our own histories, cover the world through our eyes. You know, some groups are already doing this, but, and that's really exciting, but we need more. And so, it feels like I'm being prompted again by my Ho-Chunk name. I'm pushing an idea that we cover the 2016 presidential election through the lens of Native America. Right. The time is right. Native Americans as a group of voters are rising in numbers at the ballot box. For example, the National Congress of American Indians reports that in 2012, in the midterm elections, um, Montana and New Mexico were um, registered to vote, Native Americans in those states were registered to vote at a higher rate than that of any other racial or ethnic group. Now this is just an idea, but we can cover the presidential race through a network of partnerships, perhaps engineered through NAJA. I can see this being done through a web portal and the portal would be an interactive gathering place for Native Americans to learn about the presidential candidates and their political platforms. And um, those issues in terms of what's most important to Native Americans, uh, their families, and their tribes. It would also serve as a global forum for people to learn about Native Americans and their lives through digital storytelling, digital content, and digital tools that allow users to connect. It would also serve as an outlet for linking with social media sites, events of interest, important studies and other data, and uh, get out the vote campaigns. Uh, the content would also be available on your mobile device. And we can deliver all of this rich content in our own unique way. I shared with you a story about how I believe I was led to journalism. Whatever reason it is that you made journalism your career path, let's build on that and create a web, a native web work so strong that we won't be ignored in coverage of the next presidential race. Think about it. We could do this. We would need funding, but we could do this. The future is in our hands. It's in our fingertips, really. It could be another extension of the great gift we have as Native people 
to educate through oral tradition, but in a new way. Thank you for listening. <laughs>